Good morning, folks. This comes out of NOAA's Environmental Visualization Laboratory. An extreme red tide bloom has caused a record-setting mass manatee die-off. If you've ever been down there, you know much of the area has protected habitats for them. Not a bad article here on how farmers are having to adapt to climate extremes with a welcome tone of optimism. Did you hear about the golfer-sized sinkhole that apparently was just aiming for him? The story and a sinkhole recap is linked for you below. Moderate tremors were all Earth could muster yesterday. More rough fauna news as we have mass fish die-offs in both Rio de Janeiro and in the state of Utah. Cyclone Sandra dying as her replacement gets ready to take the stage. Hopefully neither is too damaging and that one of them manages to help out New Zealand farmers. Europe weather driver is that big blue low pressure center, driving counterclockwise, bringing moisture up from the Mediterranean on one side and sweeping down from the Arctic on the other side. Precipitation will follow the drive of the clouds along the largest convergence or gradients in temperature, with severe weather aspect mostly confined to Greece tonight. Precipitation totals in Maine hit flood levels in the Washington area, that's the end of Storm Triton. Good chance to see a clockwise driving high pressure system take the stage over the US. Spinning oppositely from the counterclockwise lows, this strong high is barely completing the helix and opting to drive much of the warm air north on the west side. That's why parts of Canada will feel like mid to late spring today. Can't wait till this hits Ohio. In the Pacific, big counterclockwise low driving moisture towards the west coast along the southern edge. Seattle doing its thing. Space weather had a new gamma burst yesterday a few hours after the news came out of the Serpens constellation. Solar wind, it is leveling off and the inductions are dying down as well. You remember from yesterday, two eruptions were highlighted, north center and from the new active regions turning in. Both were added to NASA's endless spiral. That's a nice surprise as they usually go one by one. NOAA often puts multiple eruptions together for us. Here you should see both eruptions and the expected medium impact expected at Earth tonight or tomorrow. Also yesterday, you remember a significant umbral change. Well, it bounced back almost immediately and held steady. Watch the polarity change in red and green during the event on the top left. Major magnetic shifts, not to mention the coronal hole almost Earth facing today appears to be intensifying of good size with a portion near the equator that may have an umbral opening to face earth at the same time those cmes strike us pulling up the soho lasco c3 we see venus huge heading in from the right but on the left you should see mars bigger than the background stars creeping in as well pulling up stellarium turning off the atmosphere to get a broader view and we see what's up there by the sun as most of you know the early part of this year sees many celestial conjunctions near the sun especially over the next few weeks, set to time perfectly with a massive coronal hole swinging around the backside now. But we do have plasma coming, and our latest possible geo-effective coronal hole is here. We'll call a minor watch for the times in question if they coincide. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.